Hello everybody and welcome. Today we're going to take a look at Apex Recipes, our sample application that focuses on Apex. I'll be your guy, my name is Philippe Ozil, I'm a developer advocate at Salesforce. As a reminder, this video is part of the series in which we tour the different sample apps. If you haven't watched the first episode yet, I recommend that you watch it for a general introduction to sample apps. In this episode, we're going to take a look at Apex recipes. We're going to explore two recipes. The first one is DML recipe and the second one is callout recipe. Just like the other Lightning Web Components recipe sample app, Apex recipes offer a collection to close to 100 examples distributed in 30 classes. These classes contain a number of short methods known as recipes. Recipes illustrate how to accomplish certain tasks with Apex. They are grouped by themes and you can see them in this tree. These range from very basic concepts like running a SQL query to more advanced concepts like asynchronous Apex or triggers. Whenever you select a recipe like this, you get a short description of the class and the source code with syntax coloring. You can also quickly navigate to the related task classes. And that's probably one of the coolest features of this app, you get a clean documentation of the source code. We generate our documentation from comments and annotations in our Apex code, thanks to a third-party tool called Apex Docs. We then use a custom component to render this within the app. You can also take a look at our documentation in our GitHub repositories wiki. For our first stop, let's take a look at a basic data recipe from DML recipes. The first method from our class demonstrates how to use the insert keyword to persist a record to the database in system mode. Here we prepare an account record with a name. We then insert the record with the as system keyword. Thanks to this, we can bypass user permissions. This is useful in certain contexts, but use this with caution. When we insert the record, we make sure to catch the DML errors. They are surfaced as a DML exception. In our example, we catch the DML exception and we throw a custom exception with another message. In a real life scenario, you obviously want something more descriptive than this. We can now take a look at the related test. As a best practice, we surround our test DML operations with a start test and stop test call. In between those two methods, we call the insert method that we want to test. We then run a SQL query to retrieve the record. And finally, we run an assertion to ensure that the account name from the retrieved record matches what we supplied earlier. Let's now take a look at another recipe in the integration category, the callout recipe. This method demonstrates how to send a basic HTTP GET request. We start by creating and configuring our request we set the endpoint and the HTTP method. On top of the code, we also need to set the target hostname as a name credential or as a remote site. Otherwise, the request will be blocked for security reasons. Back to our code, we can send our request and capture the response. Then we parse the response. We check for the HTTP response status code before looking at the response body. A status code in a range of 200 means a success, so we can return the response as a string, otherwise we report an error. Now that you know how to write a basic callout, let's see how we can test it. Since we're writing a unit test, we don't want to call the actual service. Instead, we use an HTTP callout mock. In this instance, we use a simple factory to build the mock response that returns a success response with it works as its body. Our mock will only be used if we call the set mock method. Note that you can only call set mock once per test, even if you need to test multiple callouts in the test. This is why we use the factory to bypass this limitation. Just like for our DML recipe, we surround our test with start test and stop test calls. In the middle, we test our recipe by running the raw callout function. We finish with an assertion making sure the result matches the expected response body, that is the it works string. Again, this example is very basic, but we have more advanced ones. Check out the other callout recipes to see how you can use other methods, pass headers, use name credentials, or even parse the response body. This concludes our tour of the Apex recipe sample application. We saw the app use case and two examples of recipes, one involving GML and the other one including callouts. There are tens of other recipes that you can discover when trying the app. Head over to this link to get started and learn more. Don't forget to like and subscribe this video if you found this content useful. 
Remember this is part of a series and we'll be touring with different sample apps in the upper videos. Thanks for watching!